it is so easy to get caught up in the world and get caught up with what the world thinks that we should have or what things should look like in order for us to be truly happy. And I'm here to tell you that all of that is a complete lie. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Anna and here on this channel we talk about all kinds of things, but lately I've been opening up a lot about mine and my husband's low income lifestyle and we are super frugal people and we have been ever since the beginning of our relationship and we have been together eight years. Honestly, if we had waited until we were in a position to have a great big fancy wedding that cost thousands and thousands of dollars, then we probably would have never gotten married and went ahead and started our family. So today I want to share with you all the six things that you need to have a beautiful, dreamy wedding or elopement for less than a thousand dollars. So the first thing that you're going to need is a beautiful Airbnb rental. Um, one of the reasons why it's so expensive it, to get married is because actual wedding venues are just outrageous. And if you can find an Airbnb, and honestly, it can be an hour from where you live. It can be locally. It can be anywhere. If you want to take off somewhere else, go for it. It's still going to be cheaper in the long run, but we found our Airbnb locally just here in our town. And we didn't really put a budget on it. We didn't really do a price limit. We just saw what the website had to offer for all over the entire area and we came across a lot of really gorgeous places and some things that i just kept in mind was are there beautiful spots to take photos are there beautiful places to um, stand in front of so when we are saying our vows are the shots going to be gorgeous so for instance the one that we rented had these it was a cabin and we got married in the fall and it had these gorgeous big open wraparound windows and I knew that the sunlight was just going to be coming in on that even if it was kind of a gloomy day it would still be perfect and it also had a fireplace so I knew once I got there, I would be able to kind of assess where everyone was going to stand and we would just base it off of that. So for you, you might be a spring or summer bride. So outdoor areas might be an option. You may be able to find an Airbnb with a stunning balcony view, or if you live near the beach, you may be able to do a stunning beach view. But the nice thing about the Airbnb is you only need one night. Even if the Airbnb is on the higher end range, so a pricier one, so for me, I know we're, we all have different takes on what's expensive, but for me, like $300 a night sleeping, sleeping somewhere is kind of pricey. But if you're looking at it in the light of this is $300 for my wedding venue. And then after it's all over, I also get to stay here and enjoy this place and I don't have to go anywhere. Then it's really, really affordable and it's perfect. So the next thing that you're going to need is a great photographer. Now, photographers in general are pretty expensive and when they kind of narrow their niche down to wedding, they get even more expensive. And really it's not so much you're paying for them to take the photos and edit it. You're more so paying for their time. So you have to think about what a wedding day actually looks like. And so they are there from the time you arrive to your venue. Typically they take photos of the getting ready process and of all the bridesmaids and everyone hanging out behind the scenes. And then they're there for the actual ceremony they take all those photos and then they are there 
for the reception and that lasts a very long time it's an all-day thing and so you are paying them for their entire day and so because of that they can usually I mean if, if it's low budget it's usually in the two thousand dollar range but wedding photographers can go up into the ten thousand dollar range easy so this is what you do you find an incredible photographer a lifestyle photographer and you just focus in on what you want the mood of your photos to be like if their style is light and airy or dark and moody or whatever you you want and you message them about their ratings and ask them what they charge for like a mini session so um, mini sessions are typically around the 30 minute mark but then also ask what it would be up to an hour and when they reply then you can just say hey my fiance and i are eloping it's just going to be the two of us and the officiant and we were just hoping that you would maybe do a quick little mini session of the ceremony it'll take probably five to ten minutes and then we would love just a couple shots after and most of the time photographers get really excited about this because you know it's intimate that's that is what photographers really love they the reason why they do what they do is yes they love the art of everything but they also just love the intimacy of creating that moment like still in time and so i remember my photographer we did not pay much for her we did i think i, I hired her for 30 minutes and it was, it was somewhere between two and three hundred dollars i really can't remember but and i thought that that was that was an okay price for that amount of time um, considering how great she was and she said that she really loved our um, our wedding the most because she didn't have to do all of that like extra yuck that some photographers just don't enjoy doing which is which I get it like taking a photo of the bride with grandparents, bride with cousins, bra uh, groom with so-and-so like, and it's just like, everybody wants a picture with the bride and groom. And it's like this like hour long ordeal after the ceremony's over. And so she just got to like have fun and focus on that moment with myself and my husband. And she got to capture the most beautiful moments without all the extra fluff. And I think that that's why she loved it so much. She honestly even stayed longer than I had hired her for. She she was just so sweet, and she she was like she was like this is this is so amazing. She was like, did you did you get any bridal shots or anything? I was like, no, I didn't do anything like that. And so she took me outside and she got a few like bridal shots, and it was just it was really really sweet. The next thing that you are going to need is obviously attire so for my husband he had already purchased a suit from Macy's just so he could have a couple of suits like most men have suits because you know you have to wear them for certain types of events or special occasions or funerals or whatever it may be every, almost every man has a suit in his wardrobe but if your fiance does not then macy's runs a lot of really great deals on suits and even to have that tailored to fit in perfectly is not very expensive so for me i did not want a big extravagant fancy wedding dress i really wanted something that was classy and simple and that would photograph beautifully but also did not cost a fortune <laughs> and so i was just kind of doing some research around the internet and if you know anything about me here on this channel i pretty much buy everything secondhand and so once i kind of got an idea of like what i wanted then i looked for it secondhand and i actually landed on this cute little bardo um, lace combo it was actually a midi dress it was off the shoulders and i just loved the simplicity of it 
and <laughs> I actually got it from a girl off Poshmark for only $28. So I paid $28 for my wedding dress and I look back on the photos and I, I think that it just looks stunning. I, I don't regret it whatsoever. While I was looking for this dress, I really came across a lot of websites that have bridal dresses that are very inexpensive. So like Lulu's and ASOS at that time both had a bridal section and the dresses on there were extremely affordable for what they were. And so to make that even more affordable, I just encourage you to find the dress that you love and then maybe see if you can buy it secondhand because if you buy it secondhand, it's most likely been worn once. It's most likely been worn to a wedding or elopement like I'm talking about here, or girls also like to buy these to wear to bridal showers or bridal parties or things like that. So they wear it once and then that's it. And a lot of the times, you'll find that they also have them dry cleaned. I've bought a lot of secondhand things that are more formal wear and usually they'll have a dry cleaning tag on them. Next up on the list is a bouquet and a little boutonniere. And most of the time, if you get a smaller one, they can be anywhere from 50 to a hundred dollars. And I think, I don't think you have to have this, but I do think that it's a really special thing. It, it really just makes the difference of, you know, of a beautiful photograph versus like making it actually look like your wedding day. There's just something so special about holding a bouquet of flowers and having that bouquet. It just, it really turns it into the wedding experience. And I know that it is a little bit of an added expense and it's not necessary, but I don't regret having mine. Mine was not very expensive and I love how it looks in the photos. I love how it kind of transformed our photos into any other photo shoot into our actual wedding day and you can really see the difference. Hopefully, if you are watching this video, then you already have an engagement ring. But if you do not, and you guys are just talking about getting married and doing it inexpensively, then fear not because I have a little idea and it's really just based on what we did. So my grandmother, when she passed away, she gave me her wedding ring and it is stunning. And it was something that I always wore on my right finger on my right hand yeah and um she would always ask me she would be like do you want this when i die and this can be your wedding ring and i remember thinking like this is not probably not going to be my wedding ring it will most likely just remain an extra ring that i have because i always envisioned that when i got married i would just get another ring and that would just be the way that it was but considering the circumstances I really wanted that to be my wedding ring and now that my wedding ring is an actual heirloom it makes it that much more special and I miss my grandmother so much and I am just honored to have her ring on my finger and it's a very expensive ring there is absolutely no way that we could have ever afforded something like this ring and i'm just really grateful to have it and as far as my husband's ring goes we actually went to a lot of places we we went to some random places like i know we went to walmart and jc Penney's and a couple other like local stores to kind of get a price range and it was outrageous and my husband is not a really big guy and so a lot of them just looked clunky on his frame but we ended up going to a couple pawn shops and we landed on this one pawn shop that had this stunning vintage gold band it's got these beautiful etches around the outside of it and i'll try to insert a picture here so you all can see it but it is just gorgeous and i think that we paid about 150 dollars for it which is 
very drastic, very drastic difference compared to, you know, what they are wanting in a well-known retail type of store. So if you do not have rings, I highly encourage you to go check out your local pawn shops. You never know what you're going to find. Another more obvious one that you are going to need is an officiant. You're going to need somebody there besides the photographer to help you guys work through your vows as well as be a witness and sign off on your paperwork. And so if you have a friend who might be ordained, that would be really cool to have them there. But if you want to keep it like fair to where there's no family, no friends, like no one there. So you're not stepping on any toes or hurting anybody's feelings, then maybe a pastor would be a good option. Or if you want to just slash out everybody that you know completely, then you can do what we did. And I think that we just posted an ad. I don't know if it was on Facebook or where it was, but we ended up posting an ad and I got a lot of feedback from a bunch of people and, and, um, yeah, and then we pick someone or you can just do a quick Google search in your area and most likely somebody is going to come up and be affordable and be a reliable person for that that day. And so guys, those are all of the six things that you really need in order to have a small wedding or an elopement. But I do have like a little honorable mention here and that is either have two cupcakes or a tiny little like mini cake. And we did this because we had a little bit of extra to play with. And I ended up going to our local bakery and I just picked up two vanilla vanilla cupcakes. And I really just got them for the sake of having a little bite of cake to share together after the ceremony was over and for the sake of the photos and I think that it just turned out really cute how my photographer just kind of took it and and stacked them on some books and and made it look really sweet but also I want to mention if you have a Publix near you they are phenomenal at making cakes and they actually have these little mini cakes they're like like uh, kind of a personal cake, I guess. And then they, 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 they continue to size up. And so you could get whatever size you wanted, but they have these little ones. And I actually, uh, got one for my daughter for her first birthday for a smash cake. And in the past, I've gotten bigger cakes made for my son's birthday parties and they will do anything. They can decorate it. If you, if you, get a photo off of Pinterest and you take it into them, they can replicate it. Like they, they can do it. And sometimes they won't like there are sometimes where they're like, we can't put this on top of it, but we can do everything else. And so let's say that your cake has all these like extravagant little like lacy decorations. And then you've got some flowers on top. Well, you can put those flowers on yourself after you pick up the cake and they do a really great job. And I, I want to say that their little mini cakes are like $11. I don't know. You'll have to check me on that it, or maybe 20 something dollars. Anyway, I know for a fact that it's under 30 bucks. I'm sorry. You'll have to, you'll have to get on their website and check them out. I do want to wrap up this video by saying, I do not think that you are a bad person if you want an expensive wedding. I don't think that it's bad to necessarily want an expensive wedding if you have the means. But what I do want to say is that if you do want one, make sure that you do a serious heart check. And I'm not coming from a place of not knowing what I'm talking about, because if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, then you know that I have been married twice. And the first time was a very expensive wedding and all of the boxes were checked. It was an entire year long planning of all of the best things, all of the most beautiful things, all of the most extravagant things. And it was, it was everything. It was everything that the, um, internet says is perfect. 
when it comes to a wedding. But what I will tell you is that when you have a wedding like that, and there's a lot of people there, you get pulled a thousand different directions and you don't even have the time to talk to your spouse like at all. And by the time it's over, it's so exhausting that you guys probably just want to go home and go to bed. <laughs> so I just encourage a heart check because at the end of the day, a really big wedding, once it's over, it feels a lot like a production and less like a really serious commitment to your partner. When I look back on mine and my husband's elopement and after the officiant and the photographer left, we were just left with each other and there was no cleanup and nothing exhausting to do. And we just got to be with each other and celebrate together and cozy up by the fireplace and watch TV and not have to do anything. And it was just... It was really special and it was really romantic and it was just really perfect but at the end of the day perfect for us right but if our story can be an encouragement to you at all then I'm so happy that I took the time to share it and I hope that this video helped you to see that you can have a beautiful dreamy wedding or elopement or whatever you want to call it for not a lot of money and you don't have to go in debt over it and even if you do have the money maybe consider not having the production aspect of it and taking that money to spend on something else that might be even more meaningful maybe it's a down payment on a house maybe it's um, a really amazing vacation or i don't know it could be anything but i can honestly say that that money could be spent elsewhere doing something that is going to further you in life instead of just creating a scenario for that last you know, a few hours and then it's over. Well guys, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you are a bride-to-be, let me know if this video helped you in any way or encouraged you in any way. And if you are also a fellow eloper or small wedding person, let me know if I missed any money-saving ideas that you personally did as well. And as always, I'll see you all in the comment section. Bye.